Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be talking about how to get the double wishbone suspension working from Blender to Unreal Engine 4. It will be just a video tutorial uh, of a written tutorial uh, in Unreal Engine forums uh, done by Xenome. I think that's how I should read this name. So the reason I'm doing this is because I couldn't really understand everything and I had to figure it out myself a lot of the stuff uh, that is not uh, set in uh, the written tutorial so uh, I will start by saying what we are looking at now mm, that's something I was talking about in my previous tutorial that it's better to model your cars uh, part by part and not by like in one piece because whenever you make some mistake or even uh, for the topology it's better to have it part by part because you can focus only on that part without modifying the mesh on the other side of the vehicle this is my second attempt to model something and it's way better than my first which is this it's everything in one piece and you see when I just wanted to add here some details I had to do loop cut and it will uh, do loop cut across the whole vehicle and that's something we don't really need so that's a really big difference so just some tip so what we are going to do today is trying to get this movement you see like I'm moving only this bone up and down like the wheel handler will be doing in Unreal Engine but our visible wheels are doing something different it's moving uh, slightly to the side as well if you see it's not only up and down but also to the right and left and that's what we want so uh, let's get to our parts so to get the double wishbone suspension working we need at least these few essential parts a uh, brake and brake disc are not essential but it's good to have them because it looks more realistic and uh, you can get some idea of how the bones will work and everything so why not add them uh, so we have our visible wheel which will be rendered in game uh, brake, brake disc, kingpin uh, to this part called kingpin will be everything attached so whenever kingpin turns the wheel will turn uh, around its pivot as well uh, this is steering rod so uh, of course it's not like that's how it works in game but in real life when you turn the uh, wheel like the steering wheel uh, this should push the kingpin and make it rotate so the wheels will steer as well then we have this lower arm upper arm of our wishbone suspension and the spring shock so what we need to do is uh, get it together first so I just enable that so you see what I'm doing so just align it I will show you only the left side of the vehicle like the left wheel because the right is really uh, not so different but in terms of armature I will show you only the bones that will be different uh, from the left side of course the front and uh, back side are uh, totally the same so I won't cover that because this will be already long tutorial enough uh, so let's move it this will be by the way two part tutorial because uh, like one part will take something around 40 minutes and I don't really want to make hour and a half long video so that's why 
one will be here in Blender, the first part, and the other one in Unreal Engine. So we have now uh, everything together. And the thing is, the spring is the hardest part for me actually. So I get rid of this because first I will show you how to make it in the spring if you don't already know. So let's create a circle, move it in edit mode so the origin stays in the same place, rotate it and add modifier called screw. Now we have this ring, so let's check calculate order and here we go. We just can now play with some values and we have the spring set up. If you scale down the ring itself, uh, the circle itself, you can control the thickness and in object mode you can scale the whole spring down. So that's how we make a spring, but that's not very hard. But what is hard and time consuming is this. We need to get this effect when we're moving the bones and that's how you have to apply weight to it. So I use uh, this masking mode by vertex. So I see every vertices and I select one ring of them, applied 100 for the first and went down by 5 to the other ring and all the way to the down so it took me like hour and a half from 1 to 0 and the same for the other bone so as I said it's really time consuming and that's why I created one and uh, saved it so I can import it whenever I need of course if you want some different shape of the spring like the thickness you have to do it all over again and that's really bad luck I guess so that's what I want to show you now we can make the other half of our vehicle I'll do and let's move it to the position we want Okay, that'll do. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can line however you want, of course, but I don't want, want to waste time with this. So, that's one. We need to make a duplicate, of course. Let's rotate it 180. And that's it. Now we have to rename them, the bones itself, because when we join them together, then can't have the same names because the weighting will mess up a little so a uh, really important thing is to get the naming right because you really want to know why did you call the name uh, the bone like this so I have my uh, workflow already but you will see as we go I'll try to explain everything as detailed as I can so really the first thing you want to do is uh, make some difference between left and right and as we have four wheels in our vehicle uh, it's m I call really like underscore and then uh, the position if it's front or back or rear actually and then right or left so everything I do uh, there's name of the bone underscore front right or front left or rear right or rear left it, it depends so they'll do we just need now to apply 
everything in terms of rotation and location the same for for spring and now we can join mesh together as well as the armature but we first we need to create one let's rotate it of course the position of axis and everything stays the same axis x-ray so we need to get it right rotation location and that's it okay so now we want to join these armatures join and then parent the mesh to the bones and now we can get rid of these because we don't need them and okay that's what we wanted okay so that's just my setup I guess you will have this set it up before you even look at this tutorial but I just want to show you everything I'm doing okay so these bones you always have to have for the spring because you know it will take a really long time if you want to apply weight to every spring you have so that's my way of doing things so now we can start making our armature so as I said I will make bones for both of the wheels but I will only apply weight only to the left side so we don't waste time because uh, the way the applying is the same for every part so let's make some bones let's get this connected first of course we will make this parent to this bone and yep okay so the theory is that uh, we create one bone that will have nothing uh, attached to it uh, in terms of the mesh so it won't deform anything it will be just in place uh, we decided to be and at that bone we will create a wheel in Unreal Engine we, uh, when you go into the vehicle movement if you remember when you have to write the name of the bones where the wheels should spawn uh, the, the these are the bones uh, that will be there but there will be no real visible wheels that's only to get some info to the wheel handler and then we can feed the data the wheel handler change of this bone to all the other bones we will have in our mesh so let's make one for both wheels then we need one for visible wheels, the brakes, the kingpin, and that's about it for now. So let's name them. Let's rename this armature as well. Okay, so this will be our main, by the way. So bone number one. This will be our, that's uh, the naming rule. You have to really get it, uh, name it something you really know why it has name like this. So you don't have to look it up all the time. So I call the fist FL, like the physical wheel, not the visible, but the physical for the wheel handler to handle and front left, right? So that's the physical. FR. This will be the visible wheel. To these bones we will uh, assign some of the vertices of the mesh. FR. This will be the brake. FL. Brake. FR. And king pin. FL. And king pin. F R. So uh, we have the naming done. All these bones, 
of course in terms of left and right will have the same origin so we will move them to the same place because they have to have the same pivot point so in my case and it should be in your as well if you have kingpin it should be in the middle of the kingpin so this so in the middle of this part called kingpin for me so let's move the cursor there and now let's get every of these bones coupled only FL of course so it's this 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 and this good move to that position and the same goes for the right side okay so now when we turn the wheel this is the pivot point in where it will turn with the steering and even the you know rolling when you go forward or backwards so that's one thing uh, another thing is we need uh, this it's in the middle okay we can use that as well anyway okay so the lowest part of our kingpin we will move the kingpin bone there because I can't really explain you now but later when we will do some bone constraints because I will show you first in blender even if it uh, won't be exporting ex exported to unreal I will show you how it all works together in blender first and then I will explain why we have to move the bone there so kingpin fl the same goes for the other side of course of course to get this tutorial you know you have to really think about what we are doing you can just copy as in my previous tutorial that it was really from the scratch and you could just blindly do everything I did uh, every car will be different and you have to really think what parts will be turning around which point and uh, the position of bones really have to be thinked about because uh, you can't really copy what I'm doing I just want to show you in my case how it is done so okay we have our basic bone set up so our brake will turn only around the middle with the wheel I will show you okay so now let's set every bone we need the kingpin has to have two child bones so let's make some children for it from the kingpin bone right kingpin FL one bone let's disconnect it and make duplicate and we have two children out of this bone we will name them one touch point fl and the other will be steer fl i can't really now explain you why we're doing it but first try to watch all the tutorial and then try to do it by yourself first watch it and then uh, like watch it once again when you're doing things but first you need to watch the whole so you understand why we are doing something like this so move the cursor to the middle of our wheel select our touch point and move it there the steer will be moved in here in the middle of our turning so as I said uh, imagine that this rod is pushing in here and here is some pivot point like the bolt and it uh, turns around it so when it pushes the wheel steers and that's what we want to simulate so now we can move the cursor there and move this bone there as well that's it and now we want to create child of the steer FL so let's make one by simple extruding and 
so let's select this connect it and move it to the same position as this ball and it should be facing the opposite way so now uh, we just need to rename it and I like to call it steering not steer but steering it's just my way of doing things as I said you can rename it however you want but you really have to know which bone is which by just knowing the name because we will use it a lot I won't really show you like this is the bone we are applying weight to I will just say the name of the bone so that's our basic kingpin now we need bones for upper arm and lower arm so let's make two uh, one let's disconnect it one and two this will be upper arm FL this will be lower arm FL so now we have to find the pivot points of our arms if which in my case is in the middle of the arms themselves like somewhere in here for me the once again imagine there is some bolt of course you can move it a little bit to the side but it really doesn't matter for me now because I don't have any other mesh only this so let's move the lower arm there and the upper arm as well so cross the upper arm okay this is still the uh, spring bone as you can see and we can rename them as well so let's find the upper this will be our spring top FL and spring low FL ok the same goes for the other side spring top FR and spring low FR and we need to do the same of course for the other side now uh, it really doesn't matter in w what orientation the bones are uh, but every bone except the arms and the shocks and the steering of course should be uh, looking as in the previous tutorial uh, y to the left x to the forward of the vehicle and z to the up uh, to the top so if you don't know how always try to give it like this and later you see why some bones can uh, be facing different so these are a kingpin bone uh, we can make child one disconnect it make a duplicate of that bone and once again call it a touch point fr and this will be our steer fr so the attach point will go in here and the steer will go in here uh, huh. here we go And now we can make a child of that bone, which will we disconnect. If I can click it, yes, and move to the same position, and call it steering. Steer. Oh, wait. Oh, yes. F R. Okay. Now we need to create one more bone called steering rod which will be positioned in the middle of these and the whole point when we are doing is why we are doing this is because these steering 
FL and FA will be looking all the time towards this bone. I will show you in constraints the whole thing how it works, but first let me set this up. So what we need now is to click our lower arm bone, and make one child, and let's disconnect it, and we will call this child um, pinpoint, pin point fl and it will be placed where the king pin fl is so let's move the cursor there and the bone there the same goes for the other side but we have no arms in here so we need to create lower arms for our right side so let's do one and let's do the other and let's scroll them upper arm fa lower arm fa and we need to rotate them 180 we can't we can change the row of course if okay no row uh, so once again that's what we want for our lower arm And this our lower arm and upper arm. This is really like advanced thing we are trying to do in here guys, so if you don't really catch up with me what I'm doing, you better check some tutorials on armatures and everything because you can do this like you just discovered Blender and Unreal and yeah let's go do some double wishbone suspension you really get you really need to get some grip of these things because I can't really each tutorial explain how to weight something and stuff like this so I just wanted to say that so okay this is our upper so we'll create our child of the lower bone, disconnect it, and let's call it pinpoint lower arm fr pinpoint fr. Let's move it in here. Okay. So we have this setup. So this is all we need and now for the upper arm and shocks so upper arm is this yep we need to create one child for it as well it can stay connected but it doesn't really matter but what we want to do is get the lowest part of our shock get the cursor there and move this bone there as well but like this just get rid of this child just some approximate position and then selection the cursor and now we can create the child which will be called what is this bone action oh. that bone in the middle I didn't uh, name it I call it steering rod uh, that's the bone that the steering FL and FR will be looking at so that uh, is here it's I call it spring look FL so it's child of the upper arm and the lower spring spring low FL will be child of the upper spring keep offset and this uh, spring top FL will be moved to the very top of our shock like this then we will move this head or tail I'm not sure what this is called back to this position 
and once again do some approximation and then select the cursor okay and now we want our lower spring which is a child of our top spring to be moved to the same location here and that's it that's all the bones we need to be set up for one wheel so let's make for the right side the same so we have our lower arm fr has pin point set up king pin is already set up so we need i guess only the top so let's make it the same way cursor to select it selection to cursor and now we move in here so once again approximation because if you do it just like the bone is anywhere I can ex show you if you just uh, go to search and cursor the bone will twist I'm not sure why this roll happens but that's something we don't want so it's better you see now when I'm moving the roll it's changing but the bone it stays the same orientation and that's something we want so it's better to get the approximate position and that little twist is not so bad if you do it like this so that's our upper arm the same goes for this approximate and now this make this child of our upper bone spring top fr good and now make let's make child of our upper arm connected might be upper arm fr let's name it spring look fr you really have to think about what you're doing in this case guys because otherwise you can do much more you really have to think like w why I why would I put this bone in here and why would I do anything like this uh, do I want this part to be moving this way and all these kind of questions so now we can start applying weight to the bones so let's go to the weight paint vertical groups and now we can get rid of these that's all we need okay so let's add new group and you have to name this group the same name the bone is named so it knows what vertices applies to what so let's start with this fl okay i will one thing is that i need to apply weight like this first because you see these little rectangles they are not part of the disc because they are just objects joined together and if i do this masking mode and control l you see they are not selected so i need to do it outside of the masking mode what i'm doing now what i'm doing mm, okay i'm not sure what is happening right now it's the yeah, it's made some gradient or what Okay, that's not something I want. Uh, what have I done? Wait for a moment. Oh my god, what is this? Mm. Ah, okay. No. Burn mood pain stroke. Please curve. Okay, that's it. There's, I guess, no. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
I really don't know what I pressed. Why is this happening to me right now? What is this thing? Tell me, please. Oh, you know what? I just change it. That mix. Okay, I guess that's better. So just okay, I hope so. Of course, we need to get rid of these. Sorry, guys, for this. Okay, respect L. If you know what was cause of this, you can write me in the comments. I would be really glad. I would appreciate it. So now let's select all the faces. Let's see what I've done. It's not it. Okay. Hmm. I have to think about it. Oh, I need to. Need to burn mix. Okay, maybe. Oh, so let's see what I've done. Pose. Armature this FL. Okay, so we have something where on the braid. So okay, looks good. Let's see if our spring top spring low is not moving anything okay so that's for our wheel we need one for our brake brake fl awesome break fl that's what we need let's try it okay break breaking on nothing but break the kingpin can get rid of this and go in here kingpin fl Great, now we need our lower arm. FL, it's this, this, and this. Upper arm, upper arm, FL, which 
real health I think of this plus the lowest point of our shock tube which we will get in this why do I have break when I want to do this good now to take the spring oh it's already created actually spring top FL we want to get it to control also this but again except the lowest parts okay and the spring low have to control this as well so I guess we have everything weighted oh and the steering now steering FL we will be controlling this rod good so now before I start doing anything I will explain you the bone constraints how they work in Unreal so let's get to another layer let's create new armature and let's make some duplicates so let's say I want this bone to be copying a uh, location or translation of this bone, okay? So let's go to pose mode and let's add some constraints. Copy location, armature, no, armature zero 01, bone 1. That's the problem uh, that in Blender you can uh, use space, like local space. And when I move this bone, the bone on the left will move with it only not the absolute like the total value of the location, but only the delta. Like you move it up, this bone will move up as well. But if you do this in Unreal, oops, sorry. Uh, in Unreal, when you do copy location, it everything is in world space. So as you can see. Uh, it will move instantly to the position of that bone and that's something we don't want so everything we in terms of location has to be in world space so how to get this right is you have to make child of this bone no matter where it is looking and make it go into the origin of the bone that has to copy the location so now go in bone constraints copy location and make it copy location of this bone so whenever we move with this bone it's in world space as you can see and it's moving that's why we have to create a lot of children because when we want this bone to stay in place and only copy the movement they have to be children at the origin of those bones so that's one thing. Uh, another thing is it's the same with the look at. So when we use uh, this bone, we want to look at at tip of this bone. We can just use here is track two. Look at this in Unreal. Track two is in Blender. It's looking all the time at the origin of the bone. So when we want to uh, make it look at the tip, we have to create children at the place we want them to be looking so we now can go to bone 4 and you see so that's the whole point so whenever I move with this bone everything moves as it should uh, but that's only possible with uh, children bones and down that's the look at and copy location and co uh, about the rotation there is one thing that if we are using node copy bone in unreal we are not using the copy rotation because let's see let's say i want this bone to be copying rotation 
of the bone on the left. You see it's perfectly fine like this because they are uh, not rotated before they are copying location. But if I move this bone in edit mode and go back to pose mode, you see it goes exactly uh, to this uh, rotated state. So that's why we, uh, not for every rotation, we are not using the copy rotation node, but uh, we will use apply percentage of rotation. And in this case, uh, it's something like if we do local space in rotation, that's the same. Now, you see, so that these are the basics I wanted you to know. So that's why we have to create a lot of children so the bones will know what to do so okay now we can let's apply weight uh, i thought we applied everything as i think okay so the last thing we need this lower arm tip to be looking at the middle of the wheel and i will explain you the theory behind all of this just in a while, so approximation, and that's it. So, how it this all double wishbone suspension works? I move, or the wheel handler in Unreal Engine moves with the physical bone, okay? So only with this bone up and down, that's all. Uh, Unreal can't do anything else about it. So we make this lower arm to be looking at the physical bone. So whenever we move this up, this bone will follow it with the tip of the bone. So let's do it. The first constraint will be lower arm. Track 2, Unreal Engine is look at. Armature, physical FL. And that's why we need to move the bones in edit mode before anything else because if we do it like this then you see in pose mode the arm is already moved uh, rotated and that's something we don't want at all so that's why you need to position the bones in edit mode uh, to the rest pose so now we have the physical FL so now we move the bone up and you see the bone is following our physical bone and with it moving the lower arm and as well its child which is pinpoint fl now we want the kingpin to be following this lower arm so whenever this lower arm is moving the kingpin moves with it that's why there is the child bone called pinpoint which is child of the lower arm so now let's go to kingpin let's make it copying location that's why we moved it down because they have to share the origin of the pinpoint fl so now if we move the physical fl it's moving already with the kingpin and you can see the movement goes already to the right and left that oh, i didn't connect it I have to move the mesh as I can see. Sorry about that guys. And kinda Okay. Okay. No, just so it looks more natural. Okay. So now we move the physical FL up and down, you see that's the movement we want to get. All I'm doing is still moving the physical bone alongside the axis, only up and down, nothing else. Now we want this upper arm to be copying location of the low arm. So let's get to upper arm, copy rotation, armature, and lower arm FL. And you see, if we use the copy bone node in Unreal, that's what it will do. But we won't use the copy rotation, we will use apply percentage of rotation, which is like we 
do in here use local space not the workspace so that's exactly the same so now we got this moving now we want the physical the visible wheel to be following the kingpin as i said only when the kingpin moves the visible wheel can move and rotate as well of course so visible fl will be copying location but not the kingpin bone because if you remember we created one child of the kingpin bone called a touch point and the uh, and another one was the steering but now we are focusing on a touch point bone so the visible wheel won't be copying location of the kingpin if we click kingpin you see it goes to the origin of the bone kingpin but that's why we created this attach point so it stays in the middle so now if we move the physical wheel up and down it moves the whole wheel with it and that's already the effect we want to have you can see how it's going not in line but a curve now it's in the middle in the middle to the side that's all the point of this double wishbone suspension to get it this like simulation of the suspension so now we want to break fl to be copying location of the visible wheel because we don't want the brake to be somehow dislocated from the wheel at any time so armature and let's find our visible fl so now we move our physical fl up and down the brake moves with it that's only movement we did not do anything with rotation so far now to get the shock see everything is moving except the shock so we need to set the spring top fl to be looking at the child of the upper arm which is called let me find upper arm as spring look that's the child we created i will show you in here the little bone right so whenever this upper arm moves this child moves with it and this bone has to look at the position of the little bone so let's find spring top fl track 2 armature and spring look fl spring look fl and that's it you see okay so now we can get rid of this this fell height it's already looking at that bone there which is child of the upper arm we just need now to get the spring to contract whenever the, the wheel goes up and the opposite so to do that we need to set constraint to spring low fl which is uh, the low bone controlling the spring and it will copy location of the spring look fl which is still the child of the upper arm so now when we did this let's try it and here we go you see that's the effect we want to do now if uh, you see that steering rod it's not doing what we really want because it doesn't go with this uh, with wheel up and down it stays this end should stay at the same position all the time only this should move i know there should be more like joints uh, model than everything but i just want to keep this simple it's obvious enough that this won't really work in real life but you get the point right so let's find our steering which is child of the steer fl which is child of the kingpin it should be in here and let's make it look at the steering rod if you remember that's the bone in here which is shared by the left and the right steering as well so let's make it look at the steering rod now when we move up you see that's all we need now in terms of rotation we want the visible wheel to be rotating to be copying rotation of the physical all the rotation that physical wheel does will the visible wheel do as well uh, this fl so 
when we rotate the Y, it will move as well. I'm moving now with physical wheel only. Every time you see I'm moving with something, it's uh, physical wheel. We go back, uh, back uh, to the front and turning. But you see, we want this kingpin to be turning as well. But this kingpin will be turning only alongside Z because we can make it turn kingpin like this. It's not how it works at all. This is real bad, right? So let's go to kingpin, copy rotation, armature, copying from physical FL, and only Z. And the same goes for the brake. Brake FL, where are you? Here. Copying rotation. Armature, this FL only Z, and that's actually everything. So we go up and down. We go to the right, to the left. You see the steering rod how it's moving. That's what we really want. The kingpin is moving as well, and the brake as well. But we can't let the brake know to be moving with the roll. So we have to. Uh, disable the copying rotation of this. So that's actually everything we need to do. So uh, in next part, I will show you the and the start. I will end the right side of the waiting and the back. So we have four wheels, and I will show you the export options, and then we will continue in Unreal. So thank you for watching and see you soon.